We good? Well, I, 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 our voice is good. Check your phone. Check one, two. Check one, two. That's it. Check one, two. All right, we're good. All right. Bring us in. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the Really Charlie Podcast. My guest today is the All-American from Fall River, All-American from the state. In my <laughs> eyes, I love this dude. I love what he's all about. Mike Heron, th my th man. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Long time ago. Yeah, my friends, yeah, yeah. but let me tell you something. I'm a fan of what you do. Yeah. You know, all, the, all those old school the Buffett cats you get on there, and just how you you have this niche, and I love it. You know, and the fact that you're on Spotify and you're on everything else gives a credit to how industrious you are because we got this whole operation yet, and we, and we can't find a way to get on them things. <laughs> so congratulations, Thank welcome you, to brother. the welcome to the podcast. Uh, uh, family, but it, it's a little. Uh, we're doing a, the podcast from my studio, yeah. but you know, sometimes like in college March Madness games, he's the home team today. So he, yeah. so he's sitting in a big chair. We got the really Charlie logo up there for him, and uh, it's just a pleasure to have him in my studio. Pleasure, so, pleasure to be here. Yeah. Um, I definitely, uh, am, you know, love watching you. Uh, he was yeah. probably a year or two after me in uh, high school. Sure. But I, I definitely loved those games, and I didn't realize how blessed we were until later on. When, it, when it's gone. When it's, and, yeah. and when you're when you're seeing the back of bleachers, when you guys are playing, yeah. you would never see the back of no. the bleachers. No, and, you know, it was, it was a crazy, crazy time. And as a matter of fact, I'm work. I'm still working on a YouTube project that got. I went through some shit over the last year that we had to put on the back burner. But we're we're, we're slowly starting to accumulate the tapes again. Of course, my studio burnt down, the old one. But we're gonna have a vault of classic games from Eastern Massachusetts that we're gonna roll out there. I got the two New Bedford State Championship games. I got the two games. First Drifty that year. I got some New Bedford Super Bowl games. I got some Legion baseball games. Uh, you know, we, I got a bunch of my games, and we, we're in the process of getting them from Brockton and more from New Bedford and some of these other schools. We have a few from Conley, a few from Stang, a few from Tabor, mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, you know encapsulate it. But it was a golden era of high school basketball because it was the last decade before the prep schools raided it yes. and ruined it. Yes. You know, when you were state champion back then, you were state champion. Mm -hmm. You know, now everybody knows, you know, the best 20 players, 25 players are all in prep school. Yes. So, I mean, I, I don't want to knock any type of success, mm -hmm. but it's certainly not, you know, the road that we had to go through. I mean, my, my, my senior year, we had to be New and South with Reggie Stewart, who, uh, who passed away. He, he was a uh, rookie of the year in that league. Did that in the following year. He passed away of a heart attack. Uh, we played Madison Park, city champs. Uh, Harold did team, top 10 team. We played them in the quarterfinals of the South. We played Brockton, okay? Uh, this is before uh, the big three, so they were suburban mm -hmm. league champions, okay? Yep. And Curtis Bostic was captain on the only team from Cincinnati that went to the Final Four. Okay, they had big-time, big-time players. Uh, Cambridge, and then of course Travis Best in Springfield. So it's, to be for, to beat five teams like that, you know, uh, it truly, uh, you know, it truly tested the iron, you know. And it, the the craziest thing is that when Travis was playing, even I think his junior year, people were already saying. He's NBA material. Oh, yeah. They were already saying that. He had 70 points two games before we played him in the tournament. Yeah. And I'll never forget it. I'm, I'm going to tell you about the press conference, okay? Mm -hmm. We're doing this press conference, and, uh, you know, obviously I'm getting a lot of attention. Yeah. Coach Karam is getting a lot of attention. Travis is getting a lot of attention because he's an All-American, top 10 ranked player in the country. He's coming off a 70-point game in the tournament, you know, and then, uh, you know, and then they, 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 
they made a big mistake. They they asked, they didn't ask my man Johnny McDonald <laughs> anything about him. Every question they asked him was about Travis. And my man, very politely, and if you know his manner and you know his way, mm -hmm. he pushed the microphone aside. He said, I've answered all the questions about a sophomore that I'm going to answer to. I'm a senior. I, I paid my dues. Ask all Mo Moses. Ask all Lando Vandross. Ask Jason Baptiste. I deserve my time there. And I'm going to let my talking do. I'm going to let my talking happen on the court tomorrow night. Exactly. And we all know that uh, we, tra we found Travis best out early in the third quarter. Jerry had made eight three-pointers in a row. I finished with 39, he finished with 35 points. So it was a great way to go out. Oh, and it, it's yeah. definitely a good. And being undefeated, too, because I predicted it. But that added, that added to the stress. Any winning it again, even though we were twice as good, was twice as hard. Mm -hmm. You know, because now you get that 47 game win streak. You can't, you know, you got, you're ranked in the top 10 in the country. You know, I ran my mouth off, said we're going to go undefeated. We did. We almost lost to New Bedford. I don't know what was going on in New Bedford, but they had us. They were beating us 33-6 to six with four minutes and 57 seconds to go in a game. You know, and the entire stadium was bleep you, Heron. That's, mm -hmm. all, that you, that's all that you heard. And uh, why, why did that freeze or that chant? travel because your brother got the same I'm thing. I'm sure, yeah. A lot of things I got, my brother got, too. So, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know what I mean? A, 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 lot, a lot of things. Only his girls were a little better looking than mine. <laughs> his photo shoots looked a little better than mine. But we all know that I, we, we had the je ne sais quoi. We were a different bunch. Yeah. In my brother's defense, my brother played with boys. Mm -hmm. I played with guys that were men. Yeah. You know, it was much the... And then we were all good. We are all family. Yes. But, you know, Lamar Stevens, King of Hillside Manor, Norby Martin, Columbia Street, John Murray, King of Chew Park, Chris Means, Anthony Court, Pat Malloy, U.S. rugby team, Judd McDonald from the famous McDonald Legacy. You know, we, we were, uh, we were battle-tested and we were ready to go. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and, and we, were able, we were able to get it done. And I often, uh, about that game, right? It is the only time I've ever seen my father cheering at one of my basketball games. Wow. He was he had me young at 18. Mm -hmm. He was state rep. My mom was working at New England Telephone. Uh, she was in management. Uh, young family, you know, uh, uh, Chris, four, five years after me. And my father always prided himself on riding it out. Not getting too high, because you yeah. know my father always said there's bigger fish to fry than this. Exactly. You know, uh, but that was the only time I've ever saw. He had a whistle that was like a cow whistle, mm -hmm. right? A lot of fathers back in the day had that. Before he had a cell phone, if you wanted to find your kid, he'd just start whistling, and we'd eventually hear him. All right. So uh, he had that whistle, and I I saw him, and because it, during that pro progress, there was like, I mean, to to be down twenty six points. And to go up two at halftime is crazy. Mm -hmm. Coach Rodericks, they you know played a lot of them young cats in that game. Lyle Silva, yep. JJ Wedge, and Charlie Tapina. And quite frankly, and I respect those guys. Those guys are warriors. Yes, you know there's there's no doubt about it. Okay, but they didn't belong in a game of that magnitude as sophomores. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, he got. I think they got a little high on the hog. Put the ball on ice. There's no shot clock. Yeah. Worst case scenario, go up 15, 17 at the half and make us chase your all game. But and they that, that was their way, to press in, to track me, to shoot the threes. And they had a potential of letting you, making you chase. But yeah. Would always, and chasing know. uphill on a road, it's harder. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially in a rivalry game like that. And... You know, we were coming off three games the year before against Jason Baptiste and Greg Rodericks and them cats. And we, we, beat them by, we, beat, we beat them three times that year, beat them once in the tournament. Every game we won by five points. So while we were smashing everybody else in the state, yeah, I, the, the wars were New Bedford. You know? I, I always talked about, I said, if New Bedford and Fall River were closer, where they were kind of like a, a metropolitan team, Similar to what they have. In, yeah. in, we got school choice, man. We can make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> get, 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 give me the keys to the Bevin I head coaching job. Yeah, I'll right. have every good player from Somerset, <laughs> Rochester, Wareham, 
They'll all be for the, we'll all be there. They definitely would. We'll make Jerry Tarkanian blush. What do you yeah. think about that? Yeah, I, I believe My it. My man. I believe it. Yo, your brother's coach. Yeah, he was. He's a good man. I um one of the amazing stats that I seen was uh your team's going ninety six. Yeah. Uh wins a hundred what? In we lost eight, four games. We, we lost seven we lost seven times. Who was the teams that you lost to? I know the teams we lost to. My freshman year we lost to New Bedford twice and Brockton twice. Okay. My sophomore year, we lost to New Bedford once and Cambridge twice. My sophomore year, my junior year, we lost to Lexington. Lloyd Mumford and Sean Matthews, they were D1 backcourt. One went to Villanova, one went to St. Bonaventure. We lost in the Brockton Christmas tournament. I remember those days. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, I got to, uh, I, I, uh, two of my good friends own some successful restaurants. Their family owned successful restaurants. O'Gills and Forever. Mesa 21 and 19 prime, the Sousa family. Mm -hmm. And when I was at Durfee, the soccer team was ranked number one in the country my freshman year. Okay, USA Today used to have the high school rankings every Tuesday. I'm sure there's some whale of football, football cats out there that would remember that. Uh, you know, uh, Actually, that's the reason why I made that paper so popular in yeah, both cities, just yeah, because yeah, of the rankings. The high school rankings. And it was yeah. a great gimmick, but it was, it was, it was well done. And uh, so... But the soccer team, like, they lost in the first round that year. In my year, they were ranked in the 20th of the country, number one in the state all year. They lost in the first round again in overtime on a free goal. And it haunts these guys still. You, 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 you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they says, oh, you know, fuck you, man. don't tell me you never lost a game that you shouldn't have. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now. We were so well drilled and well coached and focused and unselfish. That we never lost to a Fiend. We never lost to a Bonstable. We never lost to a Hendrickin or a team that was good, that, but we should have beat. Yes. And that's a, that's a tremendous testimony to our program and the culture at that time. I think if New Bedford would have had a stronger culture yeah. in the 80s, I think you would have seen a lot of success. I, I'm not necessarily... I, 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 I'm not sure if Marcus Will's teams were the best teams that I've seen at New Bedford. Uh, I, I, I could tell you that the best players in New Bedford wasn't always displayed on that court. Sure, and, yeah. Uh, you, could, you got Holy Family too, right? Y yes. Yeah. And uh, even then, you know, that was, that was actually uh, a competition in itself because there was a draw to go to Holy Family. And, uh, and, and most likely the person... Let me see. I, I forget the year that Flea went to, uh, came over to the high school. Maybe it might have been. Flea, the Flea was a freshman in 1985 because I was a freshman in '86. Yeah. But Flea didn't get the ball right away either. No. It didn't. Let's keep real. There was a phenom by the name of Johnny Sylvia. Johnny Sylvia. All right. Now, I, what do you, you know, I, I, like a lot of people can talk on Johnny Sylvia, okay? I was the best player in my area. He was the best player in his area. Yeah. He had a legend. Nobody saw him because he wasn't. Messing with the A, messing with the buddies mm -hmm. or the AAU. Yeah, yeah. You just heard about him, and then I played against him one year for OLA. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's, he, that's 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 Johnny Sylvia. The strength, and the strength it, in that kid yeah. was unbelievable. Sure. Now, would it have prorated? Was he physically developed as an eighth or ninth grader? I'm not so sure. Okay. Yeah. He would have been a great, great player, but you never know. You, you, you know what I mean, like. Uh, Sometimes when you get a lot of success early, it's hard to handle. Yes, it is. You know what I mean? At Durfee, we wanted to be the first team to repeat. I was the ball boy in 1981 and 1982. Mm -hmm. I remember Bobby Duart, yep. Sean Bedoin, Scott Fournier, yep. the other Consacio, the redhead. That's uh, okay. Danny. Ca Carlos Martin, okay? Yep. Uh, who was the other guy? Scott and Todd Dostri. Who was he, though? Who was the other? Yeah. It was, it's Todd Ca DeReese and... Uh... Who was the other guy that played with Carlos? That would be, was it Mark Dias? Yeah, no, that was, no, it was that before was Mark Dias. But I remember that team. And, and, and I'm not disrespecting those state championship teams in the Bedford at all. But they were a little undersized, even though Goodine was a monster. Marcus was Marcus. You know, yeah. And the, the Clark brothers, their role players were unbelievable. Coach Rodgers did a great job with them. And I'll tell my cap because they were back-to-back -back state championships. Yes. They weren't undefeated like we were. Mm -hmm. Okay, but they were, and, and that's an incredible Incredible, incredible feat that nothing can take away from them. 
I just remember watching in 1986 that that uh, that uh, New Bedford team played Brockton, mm -hmm. and Johnny Sylvia being a freshman, missing a couple of pull-up jumpers, but yeah. in that game with Odell Wilson, All-American mm -hmm. at Penn State, uh, 6'10", Cleveland Jackson, Reuben McGee, Johnny Dozier, Terry Dozier. We're talking about big-time, big-time talent. And they played that game at Durfee, and New Bedford was winning most of that game. And they would have won. Mm -hmm. And then there was the classic at UMass Dartmouth. We were at that game when we played them at UMass Dartmouth? I wasn't at that game. Yeah. No. Well, funny story about that, right? Yep. Uh, the violence had an uptick. Durfee, New Bedford was always violent. Yes. It was, sometimes it was more violent, less violent. Or sometimes it was less violent. There were stories about the lights getting pulled out, the riot at the old New Bedford High School in 1969, I believe, during the Bedford game, the lights getting shut out at the Armory, the buses being stoned back and forth. Everybody, everybody's got a story. Yep. It was spilling out over into like the malls and the Monday nights at Alhambra's and the beaches. And, and so no school wanted to host it. Yeah. Taunton's like, no. Brockton's like, no. Massasoit, it's like, Nah, this is your problem. Mm -hmm. So Brian Baptiste stepped up, and he did it. And I, I, that's the first time I remember where you couldn't enter. You had to enter the stadium. If you were in Bedford, you had to enter uh, and go one way. Mm -hmm. And you, were, you had to enter and go the next. And my Uncle Donald and his friend Peter, because my mother got him a bunch of tickets, but they, they ran out. They paid $100 a piece to go watch that game. Mm -hmm. Stevie went started out on fire, Okay. Do it about a three point line. Stevie loves to talk about it. Every time I see him, he's going to be in my ear about it. Mm -hmm. And they were hammering us. They were up 15 points in the first half. And then I believe the class valedictorian, I'm not sure, Ian Baxter. I remember that name. Who went to Brandeis. Yep. He ran in our huddle and started cussing out Coach Karam. Wow. And you know how they say, don't poke the beer. Yeah. And the rest is history. That's and you New Bedford cats know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know I'm not lying, <laughs> all right? You know Ian Baxter went in that huddle. If he would have shut his mouth, went back, you guys could have taken a 17-point lead, you know, into, you know, into the locker room. But he had to, I mean, you go out a Hall of Fame coach like that. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Coach Karam was a pirate. He loved to win. He was like Al Davis, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You know, didn't like to have a lot of rules. You know what I mean? Didn't like, didn't like a lot of the bullshit of the minutia. We knew we had three or four plays. That was it. But we knew all the options off him. But to get in that guy's face like that, that was a no-no. So, so this nice boy from the West End of New Bedford, yep. you know, stares up this shit and crazy mess. You know what I mean? And, uh, and comes in a huddle, which was a bold thing to do. Yeah. You know? And uh, things could have got bad. Punches could have started flying. Yeah. You know I mean? You know, as controversial as Coach Rodericks was, I mean, him got into a little bit, but we're mm -hmm. dear friends today. Yeah. I would never go in a huddle and start cussing them out. That's yeah. that's a whole nother level. You know what it's, I mean? Uh, it, there was a lot of respect for elders and um, yeah. crossing the line, especially with with Coach yeah. Karam. Definitely father image to you guys. Um, you know, from A to Z, probably everyone on that. Well, I mean, Mr. Karam boy, my, my my father went from being captain of the basketball team to having me six months later. He brought me my first outfit as a baby in the hospital. You know, so that's that's the that, that's, that's the shit you're talking about, you know. Yeah. And let me tell you some. Aaron, uh, uh, Ian was a great kid, mm -hmm. and a great student, and a great man, and he was a competitor, and he was getting some playing time because he worked his ass off. He wasn't as talented baseball he was, yeah. But uh, so I don't want to, you know, call put him out there. Well, but yeah, but, I mean, but, but, but yeah, I mean that's you, you know you know the stage we were on. It was a big boy stage, yeah. And you know, as a young man, he made a mistake that I think. I know my I know our people down here think that's the reason why we came up here. We ended up blowing them out pretty good, but yeah. that woke us up. You know that's, what I mean? That's enough spark to spark up anybody. You yeah. Know? And uh, but those games were intense, and you couldn't make mistakes like that. And that was a mistake. That was definitely a mistake. Let me ask you a question, Charlie. Right? Yeah. And I don't mean to be to, to slight these young cats today, but. For 20 years after I graduated, I would get goosebumps and my stomach would flip upside down when we, uh, we approached the 140 to get to go to the Bethlehem High eventually. You know, yep. we, we, we pulled up. That's so where the true. Walgreens and the C mm -hmm. CVS is now. 
And I, my, I, I and this is 20 years afterwards. Yes. 20 years after, I was, ha- I was still having nightmares about not being able to break the press mm-hmm. and Flea and David Rose and Billy Hartman stealing the ball from me. Yes. Okay. This is you know, post traumatic stress that the level of intensity of these games. You know, there was lots of death threats. The FBI almost, I'm not sure if you know this, but the FBI and the state troopers almost made us play at 1 o'clock because there was death threats against me and my family at this game. I, I believe it. I really you do. Know, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I, I, I often wonder, see, a lot of these kids with the AAU, it's all about the back of the jersey. I got to put up numbers. I got to do work. I got to get that boat. I got to get that ride. Mm-hmm. I got to get that chip. Exactly. Yep. And like I told my nephew, like, you never got the chance to put on a jersey where the front of it meant so much more than the back. Exactly. And, and, and a culture that was just incredible and the history that was incredible. I mean, Durfee and Buffett playing in state championship games in the 60s against one another. Mm-hmm. You know, from Frank Nightingale and who's my man, Buddy Rocha? Yep, Buddy Rocha. Uh, Buddy Rocha, yeah, uh, uh, the, the guy, uh, the guy that went to Wisconsin, Barroa. Tommy Barroa was on that. Was, 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 was one of the guys on that team. You know, it's you know, you play for that. You play for that 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 culture, that pride. I I really and these kids never really get a taste of it, right? Like we got our first taste of it at CYO All Stars. And I'll never get the cheerleaders from OLOA. Mm-hmm. They don't even have OLOA on the morning of Bedford, right? I, no, I see no. Doing. I was there. That's a shame, man. That's an tr- unbelievable tradition. All the ball players, And they would have the cheerleaders, and they were funky. Yeah. And, and Farmer was a primarily white town at, at the time, right? You yep. had what, yeah, 10 to 12 original black families. You know what I mean? And like, oh, well, and just like, it was like magic when it hit. Because the towns were so much alike, yeah. but so different. They were. And like me and B Mag, me, me, me and B Mags have talked about online and and, and they can say show. There was a racial component to this rivalry as well. Of course. As yeah. well as a hundred years from a basketball. You guys owned us in football. Let's 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 face it. Bas- yeah. Baseball was probably a split. Yeah. Track, you guys dominated, you guys are mm-hmm. unbelievable. But f- from a basketball point of view. Uh, uh, there was a definite racial component. Yeah. Both in the stands, which fueled it, and not as much with the players, but it was still there. Yeah, it was. You know, the first time I ever had friends using racial epithets against one another was that game. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, my, my two captains, Skip Karam Jr., and Michael Smith, my father was a state rep, so they had a great summer job. Yes. They were collecting the tickets at Horse Neck Beach in them green shirts. <laughs> this is before they had the receipts, yeah. still, right? And you know who worked you know who worked alongside of them? Roger Lewis and Don Alessa. Uh, yeah. So oh, even though that. even though we were fr- they, we, they were friends, once that game popped off, I'm like, Jesus, what I gotta talk like this and behave yeah. like this way? Mm-hmm. And you know. It's you know, you you look at all the basketball stories that are on you know whether they're movies whether they're programs, yeah. um, and and you just say wow that's a great story, but we also have that story right here right here. In yeah, we had the best. Uh, yeah, we we had we had people from from miles around could could go to the the Jeffrey Becker. They were they were amazing. Because I think a rivalry's got to have a certain amount of things right, and and I, I sometimes I get in trouble for saying this. And I think I said this to you Sage the other day. There's got to be, a, there's, first of all, the team's got to be excellent and competitive. Yes. Right? To have that, right? There's got to be some history. We got more history than probably any other rivalry in the country when you break it down. Lexington and Conkin might have the oldest game or whatever, but they don't have the rivalry like Jeffrey Mevin does. No. You know, we used to have a saying the dogs will be out tonight. Mm-hmm. And when I meant the dogs, it wasn't my boys, it was the state police dogs will be out and at the game tonight. Every, when, we, when we talked about we're gonna let the dogs out tonight, yeah. we're, we're talking about the security dogs. Every single game, yeah. no matter what, as long as that matchup was New Bedford and Durfee, yeah. it was gonna be the same type of atmosphere. It was either gonna get the same level or intense or yeah. intensified. And I'm surprised nothing really, really crazy ever happened. No, I mean the it, guys did a good job with that. 
I know my senior and my junior year, like, we couldn't go into the locker room without uh, uh, a phalanx of NBPD and state troopers, state troopers there. But we, but, and I often wonder, and, I, and I've asked a couple of cats from Bedford, I'm not going to throw them under the bus there because they'll probably have to deal with some of this stuff. I wonder if the kids today, I think they'd have a nervous breakdown if they played a game like that. Yeah. I, I, I do yeah. not know if they could handle that level of intensity, that level of noise. And let me tell you something, every time we played, we were both in the top 10 in the state. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say 80% of the time we played, we were both in the top 10. It, it's, you know what I mean? When I say my Uncle Donald paid $100 to go see a high school basketball game, and it was worth every penny for him. It was an unbelievable game. And you know? It's, uh, it's a rival that I've always been proud of. Yeah. Always been, I mean, I left Florida because I wanted to graduate from New Bedford High School. Sure. And, and that was, you know, I did my first couple of years down there in Fort Walton Beach, and then uh, came up here. But I wanted to wear that red and white all my life. And you guys got a little gold in there, too, don't you? Well, I don't know who bring that up. That's like, <laughs> it, who bring, uh, somebody put in the Kansas City Chiefs in that, that, that jersey. You, you guys had, I'm telling you, yeah. Charlie, listen to me, I got a great memory. I know where you're There it's was 80. a sliver of gold. 80. Let's ask our listeners right out there, can we punch on that? Then? Like, was there a sliver of yellow or gold in the New Bedford uniforms in the 80s? It was 80s. And I'll bet, and I'll bet, my, I'll bet my life. 84, 85. I'll bet my life that there, is, that there, is, that there was one. They were, very, there was, they were very there similar was to the Kansas City Chiefs, and I don't yeah. know who put that in there, but I believe the athletic director was uh, Dick Pont back then. Yeah, yeah, and he was, an, he was uh, Dick Pont was an amazing guy, an amazing, amazing, amazing guy from the woman that, from the woman that the gym was named out of, and lots and lots of history, you know. And, and we all played AU together, yeah. right? Well, Lamont Ashley, David Rose, Billy, me. Played for the buddies, flee. You who, know what I mean? Who put that team together? Jimmy Tavares. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. I remember. A man, that. let me tell you something. A man that, you know, has felt some some great deal of public shame. Yes. Uh, I, I, when, when, we, when we reconnected and I brought him to the Hall of Fame with me, as my, New England Hall of Fame, as my guest, me and my brother, because he was instrumental in getting us to where we need to be, he was, he was the real reason why. The talent level at that time was playing, you know, yeah, because it was the four New Bedford kids playing together in AAU, oh. and uh, then, then that doesn't happen now. It's chopped up so much. I mean, I remember, you know, being in Flea in Buffalo, New York, getting into a fist fight at, at during the, after the game. I mean, me and Flea, David Rose, Big John yeah. Gomes. Yeah, that's another thing. John Gomes decided to quit basketball. They might have been having two state championships. If he would have played big lefty, John, I yep. believe he's a, I believe he works at Providence College now, a Boston College, right? It's one of the colleges. Doctor right. of philosophy, religion of philosophy, I, I believe. I'm gonna have to. I'll talk to his yeah. his uncle, but yeah, you know, actually, it's. Uh, um, you know, but anyway, I, I I know one of one of the Gomes brothers is a lawyer, so no, no, this this one is is a highly. Is in the academia and, and is a high level academia. I believe it's Boston College. I believe he's head of African American studies, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, he's a left hander. He was a serious player, and we used to play on that gym, the New Bedford Rec. Oh, Remember right. that? That's the that first my... time I ever played cla- on on collapsible backboards, and I had two dunks in my life in a real game. Because... And you New Bedford cats who know, <laughs> okay, <coughs> who were there? We actually, that was a... Uh, that was a great court. That was uh, the start of my coaching with uh, Ronnie Magnet. Yeah. He's actually uh, B-Mag's brother. Uh-huh. And uh, Coach Tavares, his yeah. team would come in afterwards and with the AAU team and, and yeah. the traveling teams and yeah. stuff like that. So $3 to play. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll never forget. Roger Lewis, Donna Lessa, Scott Ashworth... Uh, uh, the, the the Williams the Williams brothers, the Williams brothers from from Oliver Ames. That one went to DePaul and one went to BU. Uh, a kid from his name named Jamie Driscoll or Jamie Dw- Jamie Driscoll, I think it was. He's a, he was a, he's a he was a talented kid, and I remember being in the back with the pennies and the water bottles. Mm-hmm. But I'll never forget when I left Buddies. 
I had that front seat to myself. Mm -hmm. Just like Roger Lewis used to have. Just like Steve Wynn used to have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just like it was like the, I call it the totem pole, like the Indians try to do. And there's so much honor in moving your way up the totem pole amongst your peers, and them knowing, them knowing that you, that, that that you deserve to be there, you know. And uh, and we did, like 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 let's talk like Jason Baptiste. Like what people don't realize about Jason, and he's a he's a, an icon, and I think it's very unfair that people say that Johnny Sylvia was uh, was better. Johnny Sylvia played in four or five high school games, and I love Johnny. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. But Fleet did it, you know, well, you uh, you know, you know over a season. And let, let, let's let's be perfectly clear with you. Size discrimination happened to Doug Flutie and happened to him. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and let, let, let me let me tell you some what 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 some real people in the Buffett prop that might not they, they might not even know. After Johnny Sylvia, the ball wasn't going to Flea. it was going to Jamal Magnet. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. and you know what I mean. So Flea was. In my in my in my experience in my memory, and it's pretty damn good. Yep. <laughs> I think when they were around fifteen, I think Fleet was the third on that depth chart. The the, 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 the third player on that depth chart. Then, because the game that he first started and made an impact was was the, the one of the greatest covers of Standard Times history, the Revenge of Jason. You remember it? Yes, I do. All right. That was that was February thir Friday the thirteenth. February 1987. We were up by 15, 20 points. I finished with 39. Mm -hmm. I got clotheslined by Bill Gravel. Big, Big Bill. Yeah. Who could play a little bit. Yeah, he, 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 he had great instincts. He was heavy, but he had a high, high basketball IQ. Yeah. He had a high street IQ. He had a lot of high IQs, Billy. Mm -hmm. But he was a big, tough guy. Okay, people were scared of. And he had a high IQ. But he I believe he was left-handed, right? Yeah, and he yeah. clotheslined me going up for a layup. And I had a severe concussion, and I just couldn't get us to the finish line. I was, I was a sophomore. But that was the last time I lost at New Bedford High. Wow. You know? He, the, uh, and I think he collected so much. I think there was a bounty on me. He, Street he, legend he, says that Jimmy Estrella and a couple of those dudes, yeah. uh, and a couple of those passed the hat around the lunchroom. I think there was like... Five or six hundred in that. So Billy, I hope you had a good time on me that. I hope you had a good time on me that night. I see him every now and then. Oh, and that was the re, that was the game which led to the revenge game, which is, was the South Sectional Semifinals, which was at UMass Thomas that year too. Yep. So uh, we got to play each other three, three times. It's it was almost destined, no matter what, that you that the bracket always led to. You. Somewhere you, down you, the line, we're going to see something in the yeah. South. And 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 you always end up eliminating each other, and uh, yeah, well, more so you guys against New Bedford than. I'm gonna know. keep it real with you, right? Yeah. I looked at that bracket, and I was I didn't care where Brockton was, we had their number. I didn't care where anybody else was. I was hoping New Bedford was on the other side of our bracket. Yeah, the emotional stress and energy it took out of you and my family. You, you couldn't put a price tag on it, my man. Oh. You could. So it was very very. It was doctors and clinicians and psychiatrists today uh, would say it was an unhealthy environment, mm -hmm. okay? I think it was a defining environment yeah. where, where, yeah. where men became boys exactly. right before their very eyes. And let's not forget... Fuck the bond with your teammates. Yeah. We have a special bond today when we see one another. Exactly. I mean, all that stuff, all that different about from rah, rah, woo, 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 mm -hmm. woo. They forget about that kind of quick. Now, don't get me wrong. I got a rule. If I'm in New Bedford drinking, yeah. right, after I hear, after I, after I get called Durfee or hear a Durfee reference for the third time and it's, and it's a negative connotation, that's time to go. Yeah. I tell my Uncle Chuck, I said, okay, we've had a great time right, here for four hours, later. my man. I'll see you. All right. I, I, you know, I'm in some social club on the South End mm -hmm. with Donald, Trey, all these guys, birthday party. I'm in the bathroom. Somebody's harassing me about an N1 in 1986. Yeah. You know what I mean? The liquor starts flowing. 
right. it, it's time to go, but it, to it's go. it's all it's all love. Let me tell you a great story about Roger Lewis, right? I'm a five star. Now back in the day, five star basketball camp was an elite basketball camp where you had to get invited by a college coach to attend. Mm-hmm. I was part of the first eighth grade class to attend five star basketball camp. In that cast was class was Alan Houston, Ted Jeffries, Milton Bell, Mike Heron, Bobby Hurley, and Billy McCaffrey. Billy McCaffrey was the white mm-hmm. two guard that yep. transferred to Vanderbilt from Duke. So I'm at Camp Bridmore in Pennsylvania. That bunk stacked three high, no AC. And Trey was a high recruit. You know what I mean? Uh, and he was a waiter there. And waiters used to go for free and they'd have special privileges. And he was kind enough to say, hey, do if you grab your shit. I'm not going to let you live like this. Mm-hmm. And I stayed some nights with him. In his dorm, which mm-hmm. was like a suite with AC and a uh-huh. fridge, and, and he took care of me. Mm-hmm. But he made, 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 he made he let it be known that he called me Durfee, You know, mm-hmm. he let it be known that you know we weren't gonna be so friendly. Yeah. In a few months, you know. Exactly. And that's the brotherhood. You and know you, what I mean? You can't just just think about those teams and and how many of your teammates, Rogers' teammates, well, Trey's teammates. Those guys have excelled in life. Bobby Dua, uh, Bobby Dua, and those guys, Brian O'Neill, yep. and those and those guys from Durfee, Kenny Fiola, uh, Kevin Whining, and those guys. Yeah, I mean, it was the it was the best of the best. Uh, you know, I don't remember having tryouts for Durfee basketball. The team was everybody knew who the team was. Yeah, like nobody would even try to like try out and challenge. Like the the team was. Like already there. Like I, I never remember watching or participating in an active workout, like a tryout. Now I think the state mandates that you have like four or five days worth of tryouts. Three, three days tryout. Two, two you, two you can get evaluated, but you, it, it, you have to be there for two. But it was who would make three. up a rule like that, man? Yeah, I don't. We need to start. Uh, we need to start having ex athletes and ex coaches making up these rules instead of some of these administrators, man. Yeah, it's you no. Know the one thing that I. I I dislike, and um, I mean, I don't like how the schools kind of, you know, they they kind of pigeonhole pigeonhole um, a lot of the coaching positions. You with the to have to be members of the faculty. Uh, yeah, I don't like that either. Be in in you know what if it, it's not all well. I mean, you can f- you know probably firsthand. Some of those teachers were on the bench of most teams. Sure. And now they're coaching. Sure. But that doesn't mean being on the bench, you don't know what you, no. you're talking about. I mean, I coached and I was on the bench. Let's be perfectly clear, Charlie, of the impact that a coach can have on young men and women. So the best guy should get the job. It, it shouldn't have to be a janitor or a teacher or a security guard or an administrator from that school system. Should they be invited into the process, yeah. and should they ca- should that carry a little more weight? Absolutely. Yeah. So if it's a tie, then it goes to the, to, to, to the, somebody in the system. But I mean, where can I coach today? Yeah. yeah if I wanted, uh, to. yeah, uh, it's true. You you, know you I mean? would have to. Me and my brother couldn't coach at Drifty today. No, you would have to create a AAU team. Uh, yeah, or, uh, yeah, sure. travel, You know, something like that. But it, I should have done. We talked about putting an AAU team together. I should have done that. But the money with the sneaker companies, it's hard to compete, man. What because you, people, don't stay loyal. people don't stay loyal to, loyal to Like, back in the day, and you see it in the NBA, like, like we were buddies, man. And we were fucking, well, let, well, let's, we'll, we'll, let's go play the Roxbury Titans and that New Bedford tournament. Yep. We'll play the South End Squires. Yep. We'll play the Cooper Comets. We'll play the Talisman. You know what I mean? We'll, 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 play, the, we'll play the Roxbury Titans with Al. Yep. Come down in his convertible. I mean, let's do it. We'll, 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 let, let's go. You know what I mean? You know, and we'll play Newton Cab. You know, that's that's who we were. We we were buddies, and we we knew where we were from, and we were just as good, if not better, in that time frame. Yeah. Than, than those guys. What happens is the sneaker money comes in. Leo Papil comes back on the scene, and he swoops up the Titans, the Squires, and Comets, mm-hmm. and now they're BABC. Yeah. Now you can't compete. No. You it, know what I mean? It, you can compete when there was three Boston teams. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when they build the super team, they start grabbing guys from here, there, and everywhere. 
that's tough. Yeah. And, and but that was that was their industry. You can't flame before a but. You know, you, you, you know what the, the tragedy is about about this area. You know, to my knowledge, there are two Nike sponsored teams, BABC and Expressions, and there were two Adidas sponsored teams, the players and the rivals. Rivals were national champs. BABC's been national champ like four or five times. Okay, these those are the best kids from Massachusetts and pretty much southern New England, right? Mm -hmm. They fly all over the country. My nephew was on the road 36 out of 37 days in July and August one time. Noah Fernandes, Bryson Goodine, they're all, Chris is on the Adidas circuit, they're on the Nike circuit, right? Uh, me, Tiffany, Shakira, we drive down to South Carolina. We had a, a blast to watch them. One's in Gaffney, one's in Spartanburg, right? You have all these players, right, and the best of them, and they don't play each other all year. Wow. They don't play each other all year because of the Nike and the Adidas thing. You know what I mean? Like, forget that traveling. Instead of going to 15 tournaments, actually, go to five. Yeah. Go to UMass Boston, go to UMass Dartmouth, rotate them, and have those sneaker teams play each other. And the kids will get better, and the product will get better, and these kids aren't running around like indentured servants, you know, spending their summers in, in, in tenth, uh, you know, ninth, tenth, and eleventh grade, mm -hmm. you know, in some obscure gym at some obscure time, with some obscure number on his back, you know, uh, you know, calling his parents, being homesick. Like, like these kids don't play one another. Back in the day, we played everybody. And I, I, it just makes a yeah. better quality people. Uh, uh, teams of yeah. uh, players coming out of the state. Because now it's just another bullshit AU game. Now you're playing against, okay, this is, this is, okay, now you're all state from Salem. I'm, I'm all state from Let's find out who's better. Mm -hmm. Let's go at it. The intimacy breeds the competition. Exactly. You, you, you know what I mean? And you don't get to, these kids will fly by and not play one another. My brother played for the fourth ranked AU team in the country, the rivals. That's the dude that got indicted. Mm hmm. The dude, uh, the dude who ran that team, he was a part of the payola that Arizona and Kansas and all that was involved in, right? Yeah. Uh, they didn't play one another. You know what I mean? For two years. Like, that's insane. It is. It is. You, you know what I mean? Like, you're traveling all over the world, to, all over the country to get guys. You got competition right in your backyard. It's a, it, and I, I, I actually hate how they sell this, t this state short all the time. Yeah. But yeah. we're all spread all over the place. The kids are all over the place. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of half-ass AAU teams that aren't that, that aren't uh, uh, AAU teams uh, as well. But like these kids are always playing for what's next, right? Like I used to kid Terrence Clark, God rest his soul, right? Mm -hmm. The kid from Boston yes. passed away. Goes to school, goes to a prep school, goes to another prep school. That's better. Jumps ahead of year to go to Kentucky early. Leaves Kentucky after one year. Stop and smell the roses. Yeah. Play with your friends. The, the purest, the greatest, greatest, greatest. Listen to me. I got more trophies than anybody you know. Okay? Yeah. I was getting ready to play in New England as a junior and a senior. I was playing. There's only been three people that have been mass player of the year. Uh, uh, two years in a row in all state three years in a row. It was me, my brother, and Pat Ewing. Yes. Okay. Billy Curley would have done it, but he broke his leg his junior year. Okay. So he wasn't able to do that. There's a couple other stories like that. And I'm not sure if it's been done since, but this is what I was told then. Okay. Play with your people for as long as you can because it becomes a job and it be and and and, and it's not nearly as enjoyable once you make that step up. Because again, now it's not about what's on the front of the jersey anymore. Mm -hmm. It becomes what's on the back of the jersey. Exactly. And what you get, what you do in front of college coaches, and what you do on the Nike Elite Tour, and what you do on the Gauntlet at ESPN, and what you did against this team and that team, and and all of it. You know what I mean? It stops being about that. But the real, real treasure of high school sports is it is. The last time you'll be able to play high school sp uh, sports at its purest form. 
I always say, I always say that you only get high school once. Oh yeah. And there's there's so much, uh, and, and that so many people don't realize it until later. How many of your high school teammates or our classmates have you seen? Oh, there's a few that you haven't seen sure. ever, you know, since 1989, yeah, sure, yeah. and you haven't seen them since you left Durfee. Yeah, and, uh, and you don't miss a beat, though, when they get together. I, I, my man Jason Carell came up to visit me the other day. Uh-huh. You added Jason Carell to Bethan. Yes. That was a dear friend of mine. Okay, and I remember I, I, him. I spent the day, I spent a good part of the day he died at the hospital with, well, this, right the day before he died, and he played with buddies, and his dad yeah. was a good guy. Yes. His dad used to open that gym for us. Tall, skinny kid. I yeah, well, he got big, he got yeah. he got a little heavy. Yeah, but he had he had a million dollar mouth, Jay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He was a character's character, mm-hmm. and like playing with those guys in buddy, like you know, as, as with sixth and seventh grade, Tommy Clark, DJ Gamas, Jason Baptiste, David Rose, Billy Hultman, John Gomes, Jason Jacobson, Mark Gaffney, Andrew Simpson, myself. You know, we we, we were tight. You know, and when I tell you, we played anybody, and we were we, we were taking it home. We, why, we, we were winning a lot more than we were losing. And why shouldn't you? You know, yeah. with that team, why shouldn't you play everybody? Yeah. I wanted to ask you a question. Sure. Um, actually, um, before I ask, you want to share the story about Mark Bach? Yeah, I love Mark Bach. Yeah. All right. He better not warm me up again, though, because we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> he's in, he's in my dog. He was in, he's been in my doghouse for about eight years. All right. Well. We're, yeah. You 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 want you want to introduce Mark Bach? Well, Mark Bach is Chili G, as yeah. we call him. And Do people know him as Chili G or Mark Bach? See, it it all depends. I yeah. mean, it because uh, Donald busted my balls about spelling his name wrong. I'm like, he'll get over it. Yeah, and we yeah, he goes Chili Smalls, Chili G, yeah. and Mark Bach. Yeah, and so kind of younger kids may know him as as yeah. Mark Bach, but uh, you know it. It varies no matter what. It, yeah. it even varies with me. I call him Mark. Yeah. And then occasionally I was hey, chilly. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're busy, you want a coffee, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, tell us a story about his conversation. Uh, with, it started with me, right? right. Now, if you, have, if you know Mark Bach, he is a dynamic personality, personality, and... Like, like I always say about Fun Enough, we have these great characters mm-hmm. that make our thread stronger. Yeah. And for good or bad, he's part of that yes, situation without question. And to know him is to love him. Yes. Right? To not know him, he could be the biggest pain in the ass in the world. Exactly. You know what I mean? But to know him, you love him. So, me and Free, Free had a very unique relationship. Mm-hmm. Okay? White dude, tall, yep. you know, Bob Flea. Black dude, small, uh, you know, played a lot of basketball together. Flea and him had a very unique relationship. Yes, they did. You know, very unique. So to understand the story, you have to understand the context of me and Flea's relationship, Flea and Mark Bach's relationship, Flea's relationship with my family, yes. Mark Bach's access to my family, through his relationship through three, through three yep. Mark Bach being a complete pain in the ass, me, me, Having to tell him to shut up and trying to deal with him, and then he moves on to my brother and my mother and my father. Yes, right. So, <laughs> Mr. Bach, okay, in all your dignity and glory, he was a super fan for Flea and a super fan for the Buffett High, and he was omnipresent, picking Flea up to go on an AU tournament. Mm-hmm. Yo, yo, Heron, yo, Heron, you know, you know, you think you're going to get another MVP trophy. Flea told me about last tournament. I said, but let, yo, the, the MVP's all sold up in Albany right now for my boy Flea. So you get ready to have that honorable mention trophy coming out. You better come up with that championship trophy, too. And why don't you let Flea take one of them championship trophies on, huh? Why do you keep him? I said, because I do it, because I get the 40 points and the 35 rebounds. That's why, I got, that's why the trophy comes with me, right, Flea? And we crack up and we laugh. <laughs> But you know how we talk, right? Yeah. So I'm, am I on the money? Yeah, on the money. I'm on the money, right? <laughs> So now Mark Bach, so they have that thing in the breath where they warm you up, right? They smack you. Mm-hmm. And I'm a firm believer that grown men should have put their hands on, and I've been in a thousand street fights, yes. and I can handle myself. Yes. All, those, all those dudes will tell you that from a Bedford. Uh, but I, I'm a, I don't like to put your hands on people. Yeah. So I don't know what this warming up thing was, right? Yeah. So like the third time he smacked me that night, I said to him, listen, we're going to have a problem. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a fucking serious problem if you smack me again. Yes. I, didn't get, I didn't know it. Now I know it. 
I don't laugh about it right now, but now I understand it. Then it was not explained to me. I thought that I was an outsider. He looked at me as a potential victim, you know, okay. and he did it. He was doing it probably through love, but as a 16-year-old to 18-year-old guy, it gets old, right? Yes. So he used to call me up, and the conversation was legendary. And some of those dudes from the West End have it on tape. I know Ryan Saucier told me that he listened to it. I know the Walsh family told me they used to listen to it. Yep. There are tapes flying around out there. So he would call me, but you got to understand with me, Charlie, I grew up so, so cultured and so fast in front of everybody's eyes in that basketball court that the Mark Bach fascinated me my first two years. Yeah. But it was a pain in the ass. Later yeah, on. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I do, get you wanna, it. do you want to see where I'm coming from? Yep. Like, like, I wasn't caught up in a circus. Yeah. As a young man, the circus is fun. That's what it's about. The cheerleaders, the, the, with the girls from Bethany High, Al Hammers on Monday nights, mm -hmm. sneaking in the mills, pick girls up, drop and flee off. You know what I mean? All this, like, those guys to sleep at my house. We used to party. We used to have a blast. So Mark's wearing on me a little bit, right? But yeah. I love him because yeah. I know how much they love him. Yeah. And I know how, how funny he is. So the phone calls with me, I, he started calling me up in eighth grade, right? Wow. So, yo, Henry, yo, Henry, you're bad. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad, man. You're bad, man. But Jason Baptiste tells me, he told me the work you put in with that Jimmy Tavares. He told me about the work you guys put in there. I know, I see. But you know that flea's the one, right? You know that, you know that, that flea makes you go. That, without, you know, that's his thing. Mm -hmm. Gets old. Yeah. Then, then he, and he's a bright guy, too, like people. Like he's not. He's not a dummy, mm -hmm. especially when he knows and cares about you when it's locked into you. You yeah. know what I mean? So, you know, Flea's the one. So he knows that Flea's the one that makes you go. You know, you got no left hand. You can't break, break pressure. Flea makes it easy for you. you know, so by my senior year, I've had enough of Mark Bach, right? Yeah. So I used to say, where's your, where's your mom? Where's your mom at? You know, you know Flea said, your, your mother made her, your mom, God rest my mother. So yeah. made a great breakfast. She's a nice woman. So if you want to talk to my mother, Mark, here you go. And I'd hand the phone to my mother. Yep. And she'd be like, hey, Mark, how are you? And, she, and she'd be looking at me like this. She goes, Miss Heron, Miss Heron, I heard you're a nice lady. My boy, James Batty, said you're a nice lady. Said you're good to him. They like spending time in your house. He goes, and your boy Mike is a bad man. He's a bad man, but he ain't as good as Jason Baptiste. I'm sorry, Miss Heron. It's going to be a bad night for you. You might want to stay. You might want to stay in Florida that night because I don't know these guys, these street dudes, they don't like, they don't like Mike down here, man. And, I, and my boy Jason says you're good people, so you guys might want to stay down here because there's wow. nothing you can do because it's going to be whalers. It's going to be Jason Baptiste all day. So I'm always be like, oh, yeah, it's a nice rivalry, blah, blah, blah. So then finally, she gets hip to this shit, right? Yep. So she starts, blah, blah, blah. My father's grabbing a phone from my mother. You know what I mean? My brother's running upstairs to the room. Now he gets on the phone. Fuck you, Mark, Mark. You bust the blah, 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 blah. So, his, so him and Chris had legendary battles. Yep. Now Chris is in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. at the t at fifth, fourth to fifth grade, at the time these phone calls start. And I used to put him on speakerphone. All my teammates would listen to it, right? I know he'd be on speakerphone with Flea and Billy and all yep. those guys. Stevie in the background. <coughs> so that would be Chris and my, and my brother. Wow. You a bad man? You a bad man, little Henry? I know. They, they tell me. I see you shooting half time. You're, bad, you're a bad man. I said, but you ain't never going to be Jason Baptiste, man. Unbelievable. You ain't never going to be. Miss Henry, Miss Henry, I hear you're a nice lady. And I do not wish you any ill will. And, and I respect the family, every family I do. But New Bedford ain't safe for no Herons tonight. It's going to be Jason. It's going to be Return to Jason. Blah, blah, blah. He was like Bundini Brown. Mm hmm. To, was exactly. to Ali what he was to flee. He's flea's hype man. And he was Definitely. an ultimate character. So it got to the point where <coughs> he pissed me off because he smacked me on the shoulder. Got, uh, <coughs> then I was outgrowing. Like I used to get the nonsense of it is it's fun. Yeah. Competing over the girls, seeing each other, everybody flexing. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because like Marcus Schumann said, we were your average white boy team. Yep. You know, we try to beat you, then we try to beat you by 40, then we're looking to steal your girl, and then if we're going to get down the parking lot, we can do that too. Mm -hmm. So Marcus Schumann is living in, South, uh, in, 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 in at USC with all these dudes from the Bedford and friends with all these UCLA guys, and they're like, how come you guys can't beat them white, them white boys out uh -huh. there? <laughs> like, they're not your average. It's not what you see. Yeah. You know what I mean? They got a huge program, huge culture. 
and that's the funny thing. So, but as a senior, I was just trying to get to the finish line, man. Yeah. I didn't have any time for any of that nonsense. I wasn't chasing girls. You know, I had enough. You know what I mean? I wasn't chasing Al Hambras. I wasn't looking to be at the North Dartmouth Mall with flexing in my varsity coat. There was a bigger picture. There was a bigger picture yeah. to, to, to do there. You know, and you couldn't get caught up in that nonsense because it gets distracted. Yeah. And I love the nonsense, but Mark was part of the nonsense. But a special part of it. I don't mean to demean this. Yeah. It was one of the great things that made the rivalry unbelievable mm -hmm. was that stuff. So I kind of handed them off because I would never say, F you, don't ever call me again and hang up on them. Yeah. Okay? First of all, because that would probably trigger them to call me 10 times as more. Mm -hmm. But I would never do that to him because I knew the type of character that he was. So I kind of pawned them off on my brother, and I'm sorry, and, and my mother, and I'm definitely sorry. So my mother and my brother and my cousin Sarah would take turns going out of with Mark Mark. Mm -hmm. Like if we knew the phone was ringing, nobody would have the balls to call my house 9 o'clock, 9 30 night, not even driven to Beverly Hills. Because what, what are you going to say to me that could possibly captivate my interest? Mm -hmm. My mother's going to sleep worried about the game. My father's acting like he isn't, but he's worried about the game. My brother's going to, going to sleep thinking about him playing in that game someday. Yeah, and right. I don't want to talk to anybody unless you're a teammate of mine. Exactly. You know, you know what I mean? And we know it was Mark. How many times I tell you, blah, 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 blah. No, let me talk to your brother. Your, your mom's a nice lady, Mike. Your mom, don't, don't, don't hang up, Mike. Don't hang up, Mike. Don't hang up. You know what's going to be about Jason all day? All day. Blah, blah, you know? And I would hang the phone. I would give the phone to my mother and my brother. And they used to talk to him. They talked to him for a whole year and a half. Mm -hmm. You know awesome. what I mean? And that's, that is, if you could see Mark, Mark, and my mother and my brother and you could take a picture today of those three individuals, that would be special to do. Yeah. And if, if anybody does have the tape, please find it for me. Well, because yeah. between you and I, we can definitely find it. That was, that, I don't want to, I might have sounded dismissive of it, but Derby Basel, a senior year, became a business for me because of all of the expectations and all of going. If we were the first team to repeat, in 54 years, I think, yeah. or something like that, you know? And we, we brought high school basketball back to the Boston Garden. We, we were the first game played in the Boston Garden, Durfee Lowell. I didn't in, know that. In, yeah. in, in, since 1973. Wow. We sold a lot of tickets. We sold 11,900 tickets in the Cambridge game the year, the year after in like an hour and a half. The craziest thing is that was, uh, it was amazing that you can look to the left and right of your, of in that stadium and see people you knew. Oh, yeah. And then look across the court, maybe you st still see some other people you know. And it was it was yeah. actually being in New Bedford. Sure. Or yeah. Durfee. Yeah. And, and, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you this, nobody had fans like us. But I would say our fans for basketball were, we never played a road game. I like, uh, never played, a, never really played a road game in the tournament because of our fan base. But after Durfee, I would have to say probably Lowell and New Bedford next too for yeah. who are gonna bring the who are gonna bring the most fans. You know I, what agree. I mean? I agree. You know, uh, I agree. Mean, because it's... because that's the last of the dying breed. Like Lowell High School, Brockton High School, Durfee High School. You wouldn't think of going to I mean it was different maybe with Holy Family New Bedford, but I, it, that was treason. Yeah. If you went to Conley. Like, if you weren't part of this um, our mission, bro, then we, 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 we were cool with you still, but, 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 we, 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 but you weren't down with it. You know what I mean? I actually remember this, uh, this is, and, and I didn't realize it, but actually Bishop Conley beat New Bedford High School one year. That's crazy. And I, 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 and I saw Bobby Duarte and those guys score 127 points against them. They made them play in the afternoon because of the violence at Durfee, New Bedford. Yeah. In 1919... 1983, they played Conley at like noontime on a Saturday because of the violence at the Durfee game the week before. Wow. Yeah. Charlie, the buses, right? Every window would be broke. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they were dropping cinder blocks. And, and, I, and now see me like talking about me playing for four years. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. 
Trey didn't play varsity for four years. I don't think Bobby played. I played for four years, wars. My first New Bedford game, I played against them. We beat them in their Christmas tournament in 1986. They were number one ranked team in the state. We beat them 52-49. Mm-hmm. That was my second game of varsity. Wow. So getting the police escorts and, and escaping the violence, right? You know, you're sitting there, and then the cops leave you at Ford's Corner, and you're like, no, no, yeah. no. You got re road left. What the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. And the cars would fly by and zing, 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 zing. And then we knew we were getting hit, and like Coach, Coach Rodgers used to make those guys put their bags up against the glass. Mm-hmm. We would have to get low in the seats and get on the floor. And then next you know, there's, there's br- bricks just coming through the windows. And then, well, even at Muskie, they, they were dropping the cinder blocks on us from the overpass. You know what I mean? Crazy. And that, but, but, but listen, that happened both ways. Yeah, both ways. I was yeah, getting ready to say that. He who has no sin cast, us, cast mm-hmm. the first stone. Exactly. It happened both ways, yes. okay? Nobody has the, the moral high ground when it comes to that, okay? Yeah. But it was crazy. It, I mean, can you, that would be on the cover of Fox News today yeah. if that happened. Sure would. I mean, I mean, you ever walk into a gym scared shit? You know, walking to the Beth and I on a Friday night at five o'clock at night, the JV games at five forty-five. It being dark, it is, you know, a thousand cats waiting for waiting for waiting waiting for that bus to get dropped off. Yep. To Hakuyo. The you same know? thing when you came up to Durfee, you had yeah, the same. You, you, you go. I talked to the guy guys from you, you go around that rotary, you know it's all business. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, it's it, great. It, now, do you remember the Armory? Yes, I do. Yeah. The Bank Street. Huh? Yeah, that was yeah, a crazy yeah. place. My father said they used to hit up, hit up pennies and paper clips and drop them on you and stuff. But yeah, it's a great rivalry. It's a great story. But I think yeah, in a, when you write a book, you have a forward, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have a finish. And that it's like two when you play against it was like two very strong families who knew each other, but hated one another, yes. but respected them a little bit. Mm-hmm. You, you, know, you know what I mean? They know. Now it's like we're one family, and now I think we respect each other even more. Exactly. And this is like, like I, I, I root for the Bethany High. Mm-hmm. I'll never root for BC High. I'll never root for St. John's Prep. You know what I mean? I'll never root for, for, for one of those powerhouse classic, all those regional schools. Mm-hmm. I'll never do it. You know what I mean? You know, if, if, if New Bedford's playing Bridgewater for the South Sectional Baseball title, I'm rooting for New Bedford High. Yep. And there was a time in my life where I never thought I'd say those words. It's so true. And but, it, but it is. I mean, you, you're, you're a great example. You, your friends, our friends, mutual yeah. friends. Yeah. It's a perfect example of how, um, you know, that rivalry produced some, some great, great friendships. Unbelievable friendships, yeah. And, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, I um I came over for Thanksgiving one day, Charlie, and these guys are like hanging out in the bleachers together, like before the game. Yeah, and I'm like, what the what is going on here, bro? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean the mayor is shaking, shaking. It was so bad that years. They did so many silly things to try to bring some normalcy and some friendship back together. Like the mayors used to shake hands at half court before the game. Yeah. Like, come on with that noise, yeah. bro. Bring back the dogs. Yes. Let I'd, the dogs. All right, listen, we'll work all that out. Couple of broken noses in the parking lot. Couple <laughs> of black guys. We've all been down that road before. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bring back the dogs. Because okay. you know when the dogs are here, both teams are good. Yeah. They were. And, and, and we hope we can get to that level again. We were, we were close, and I can't think of the kid's name, but there was, I thought the rivalry was going to get up, you know, intensify probably. Brian Rudolph had those guys balling. Yeah, that was sixteen and four. And and, and and the thing that I really liked about it was, he was working at colleges for every one of those kids. Yeah. I I coached those kids on an AAU level that Brian ended up getting back to come to New Bedford from the schools that they left New Bedford to go yeah. to, Trey and all those guys and Elijah. You know what I'm talking about, yes. right? And he did a great job with them. Yeah, because he was there. He was their mentor. Yeah, believe it or not. So sure, yeah, he, he was there. There that he was that. That that mentor that they looked, he yeah. was playing the game. He was one of their own. He was a Division yeah. One scholarship player, and in a perfect world, that's that's how it should be. I, I think Whalers should coach Whalers, and I think Hilltoppers should coach Hilltoppers. I agree. I agree. The uh, could 
Do we still have time here? Yeah, we, uh, we got a little bit of time left. All right. Um, He's got a day. He's fr- Friday. We have about five, ten minutes, right? Okay. Yeah. Let's, um, I want to ask you this question yeah. uh, about a friend of ours. Sure. Um, and uh, I like this guy. I admire him. Yeah. If he was my coach, I definitely would run through a wall for him <laughs> only because his intensity is, is – you would have to match that intensity. Sure. And, uh, and he was a coach. Yeah. He was a coach at Bishop Conley. Billy Shea. And it's Billy Shea. Yeah. How would you, w- w- you know, I love the guy. Billy, Billy Shea's the closest thing to a hilltop of that 8-1. All right. Billy Shea has his ghetto pass from the Durfee Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. He can go, he can, Billy Shea can kick it with the best of hilltoppers anywhere in this city. Right, Birdie? <laughs> he can hang with us anytime, anywhere he wants. I love the man. Bob, uh, Billy was very, very good to me. As a young boy and as a growing man, as, as like a 16 to 22-year-old man, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I know, he's very intelligent. Uh, he, uh, he got me into the talk radio game. You know that, right? No, I didn't his, know his, that. Yeah. His brother okay. was in the Air Force, and then he went to be a cop in Newport and didn't like it. So he went to some job retraining, and he went to be a sportscaster at New England School of Broadcasting. He was looking for a partner. He goes, Hurricane's coming home from school, man. Wow. You go see my boy Hurricane, that'd be perfect. So awesome. the, the influence that Billy's made on me, I wouldn't have this microphone in front of me if it wasn't Billy Shea. But he's a conf- he was a, he's a con- he's getting a little old and cranky, but he's still my guy. And, and Charlie, I'm thinking of writing a few books, right? Yep. I've held back. Me and my brother have talked about it, where his family had been through enough with the addiction and all the books and the documentaries that we couldn't glorify antisocial behavior, the drinking, the woman woman element. Yep. You know what I mean? Because people in Fall River Bethany know how to party. Yes. And have a good time. Have a good time. Just like Fall River. So yeah. So, yep. so so I watch some of these movies and I'm like, that's supposed to you know. So the glorifying of high school drinking and. Or being oversexed, or whatever it is, we made a deal that we were going to shut that off. Okay. That after the documentaries about my brother, after my brother talked to his kids, but now my brother's kids are grown for the most part. Yes. And Drew doesn't remember that life; he only remembers one life. So I've been revisiting it, you okay. know, and I want to write a small book about sometimes the sometimes the best games and the most important games in your mm-hmm. life is when nobody's in the gym. Yes. Okay. And Billy Shea took part of a game that we ended up winning the adult summer league in Fall River. When me and I had a monster game, he made a 27-foot, 30-foot, three-pointer to win the game. And a lot of teams passed on him in the adult summer league that probably shouldn't have. Yes. And we scooped him up. So it was sweet redemption. You asked Billy about the time we shocked the world at the Bank Street Army. I will. But there's a lot of those little games that Billy was around or involved in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that's the true, tr- true pleasure of sport. When you get down to its core, so it's, you know, I played in a sold-out Boston Garden, and that was the reason why it sold out at 16. Mm-hmm. So it's tough to get to that kind of mountain. It's going to be a long time before a kid from the Forum of Rebecca gets to, the, get to that mountain again. That's so true. You I, know what I mean? I mean and, I, and, and that's real talk. So when I talk about taking pleasure, I have been to the top, to the top of the mountain you know, high school basketball was banned. I mean, we were selling so many tickets that it, w- it made sense for them to put us back in the garden. You know what I mean? And we drove that engine. The Boston Globe came out right out and said it. And I drove that team in, in, that, in, that, in that industry at that time. Yeah, I was probably the most publicized high school athlete. Made, uh, arguably, I think even more than my brother was. Like the State of Times. But, uh, I mean, some of the best articles written about me were, was written by Dick White and Buddy Thomas. Mm-hmm. They used to cover Durfee. They don't anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it, it was, you know, but it was, it, it was a ride. But I had been to the top of the mountain. But when, when you peel it all away, the love of the game and the joy of the game and playing with your friends and people that are important to you, sometimes the best games are when nobody's watching. So and, true. And, 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 that, and, that's, and that's true. Everybody has a game in the Bedford and Monty's Park where they came up and they 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 beat they they outplayed somebody that was two years old that nobody was expecting them to. Yes. And they and their life changed that day. And their respect level changed that day. Mm-hmm. 
We all have those great stories, and uh, and and that's that's such a part of it, you know. Like like en like enjoy the, enjoy the journey. Don't bounce around. Don't want it too much. Let it come. Feel the pain of the losses. Feel the pain. Enjoy 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 the victory. You know, do it all. You know, and, and yeah, because I'm gonna tell you something right now. My last state championship game. This is a true story, and I like to have a good time. I was home sleeping at midnight. I was so tired. Yeah. Mr. Cam actually screamed at me and Johnny saying, look at that, everybody's partying in the back, everybody's going crazy, you guys are usually le leading this circus, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? I said, coach, we're tired, man. And I walked into my house, my parents never had a party, there was 300 people in my house. They're like, what are you doing? I said, listen, man, I'm going home to bed. This was, this, this ride took everything I had. There. Thank God we won, yeah, or so. else nobody would be talking about it, and I'd I, I have nothing to show for it. Well, you so. would have had the year before, though. You yeah, but everybody's got one of them, Charlie. Okay, all right. Nobody's got the back-to-back. -back, you know what I'm all saying? Right. Undefeated. You know what I mean? Like, True. like there's levels to this shit. You yeah. know what I mean? And with due respect to everybody else, there's been a state championship. We got two, and we have 49 wins consecutively. So, like they say, back in the day, bust that, right? Yes, bust that. Hard to do. I am so... I, I, I'm, I'm so happy that you were here Yeah. Um, on this podcast Sure. Um, because hearing these stories from you has a lot of credibility because guess what? You experienced it. Sure. And I hope you do write a book. And I'm I, gonna. I hope it's, it's uh, a book about life and basketball. Sure, yeah. Um, you definitely have a common, you have that combination right there, great stories. There's too many stories out there that are similar to yours, but they're not better than your story. Sure. And sure. I hope that you and your family get these archives together, definitely put it together. Sure. And put it out there because your nephew deserves to see that. Yeah. Everyone after him deserves to yeah. see that. And, um, you know, hey. I love the Heron family. Thank you. I love you too, Charlie, man. It was yeah. a pleasure, man. I love it. Remember, folks, it's about what's on the front of the jersey, not the back of it. As long as you keep that into its proper context, and as long as it stays that way for you, once it starts changing, you take a look in the mirror uh, and get yourself back. But uh, you're the best, man. You too. Really, Charlie, how about this? <laughs> From Podcast City Studios, man. We got your, we got your I, logo up there, man. I it's love it. it. I you, love it. You are welcome here whenever you want. If you have a show where you want multiple guests, yep. okay, this is yours, free of charge. Thank you. That's what that I'll do for you. Excuse me. Strong they, they, hands they, and they, big hands. Listen to me. That, actually, I got little hands for a big guy, you know, Charlie. Uh, my hands are frosted. Check them out, bro. Check them out, bro. I got little hands for a big dude. <laughs> Everybody thinks, look, you got, you got some... Uh, I got... That, so... Uh, thank you for your services, being a police officer for so long and a mentor to so many and an example uh, uh, for some. You look great, uh, you know, as you as you head into retirement. Uh, you shook up New Bedford politically. I thought that was absolutely hysterical, and I was rooting for you every step of the way. And all these guys doing these podcasts and like that, remember, w working together is much more helpful exactly. than working apart. We're going to talk about that at a later date, but... Thank you for coming, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Sign off. All right. For really, Charlie. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. This was definitely one of my favorites. I'm so happy to be here at the Podcast City. I want you all to to, to really appreciate the stories that you that you heard today from Mike. From Mike, um, you you got to cherish these moments. You got to hear these stories. Pass them on. Um, and actually cherish, cherish those high school years. That some it's of an you oral history, man, of the yeah. greatest, greatest high school basketball yeah. rivalry New England's ever seen. And we have, we we we're missing that. We're missing those folk stories, you know, yeah. from from the from the down, you know, the homegrown people like Mike yeah. and myself. So, and that's why I love your podcast because it's all about homegrown people, brother. Yeah, and, and we, we 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 are one from New Bedford, that's for sure. Well. It's Friday night, baby. I'm going to Providence, Charlie. Yes, yeah. I haven't been out in a long time. You got bail money? Uh, I, I'll go get you. Thank you, you my man. Thank you. Peace. Peace. God, God bless. Bernie!